I was so blessed when I came in to meet this wonderful man of God, Dr. Suleiman, and, and uh, he was telling me how he was a little boy. Why don't you come back here a minute? I, I just said to him, I said, you and I are going to be good friends. So he was telling me I, 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 I was in Nigeria. That was my first trip to Nigeria in, 80, in the 80s. But it used to was 85, 86. And I went with Benson Idahosa. And I met him uh, in Canada years ago. He was very dynamic, very dynamic. When I met him, how many of you are old enough to remember him? Put your hands up high. How many of you are young enough not to remember him? Put your hands up high. Okay. Well, he was, he was an amazing man of God. Amazing man of God. So he invited me to come to Nigeria. And he asked if I would come for two weeks. And I said, yes. But when I met him, I did not tell you that. It was in Miami, Florida. He stood on the head table. And he led 5,000 people in a song. My eyes have seen the glory of the coming Lord. The place I thought we were, we were going to be raptured. He was so dynamic, I never seen anyone like him. Later we met, we became friends. He took me to Nigeria. I saw things with him I never thought I'd see in my life. Now you young people, you young people. How many young people are here? Stand up, stand up. Look how many young people are here, wow. I think some of them stood up that want to be young people. It's okay, thank you, you may be seated. So, <laughs> I have never seen any man in my life do what he did. So he took me to preach in Ibadan and in Kaduna. So when we went up to Kaduna, we get to the airport, not one of us has a ticket. Nobody has a ticket. Nobody knows we're coming. He goes to the pilot. <laughs> that man spoke in tongues just for me, <laughs> saying he went to the pilot. He goes right on the plane. He tells the pilot not to go anywhere. He asks the passengers, it was already full, they were about to take off to Kaduna. He tells the pilot he's not going nowhere. He kicks everyone off the plane. Benson goes up on the plane and kicks everybody off. And the whole plane is empty now. And he tells them all to wait outside. Not one of us had a ticket or a boarding pass. He puts us on the plane, first class. I'm thinking to myself, this man controls the airport. <laughs> then he goes down, there's a big line of people, and he says, go, go, you go, you go. And then there's still another, I don't know how many are still waiting. He said, you all go home. <laughs> and they all went home. He goes to the pilot, he said, you take off now. And the pilot did. When I get to Kaduna, of course, I met some amazing people there. It was a powerful, powerful time. But this man of God was unusual. We're sitting back. This is before, you know, cell phones and before all the new technology. Where you had to make, if you wanted to make a phone call, international call, in Nigeria, you had to go to a, to a uh, calling center or something. Like a big, a big, a big, some some room somewhere and you sat down and waited and somebody was doing the wires you know the old wires this is back in the 80s and so we waited for two hours a man a young man comes in 
And he gets on his knees. He says, Papa, I have asthma. And Benson said, open your mouth. And he opens his mouth and he breathed like that. And then he slapped him real hard. I, I never saw anyone slap anyone in my life before. He slapped him so hard, I thought the man's face would come off. He said, you are healed. And he went, woof, like that. And the asthma came out of him just like that. The man was healed of asthma. I was stunned. I thought, dear God, this man, it, it, it like, I mean, I never saw anybody slap anybody. I remember, I remember my, my, my wife's grandmother telling me, Smith Wigglesworth, she had been to his meetings in England, and he used to punch people. And some, some man died in his meeting, and, 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 he has, and he said, pick him up, and he actually punched him in the, in the stomach. He said, in Jesus' name, rise. Wham! Nothing happened. The guy, the guy felt he was still dead. He said, pick him up again. He, he punched him the second time, and he fell down dead. Third time, he punched him in the, in the face, and the man came back to life. <laughs> and when my, when, my, when my wife's grandma told me that uh, he came back to life, I said, I'm glad he came back to life, otherwise he, he would have killed him for sure. <laughs> but I never saw anyone punch people or, uh, or slap people to, to get healed. That was my first experience with Benson. But Oral Roberts told, told me something. Now, I had not, you know, I wasn't with Oral when he went. It was after I went. And I guess there was a drought in Nigeria. And uh, the president of Nigeria told Benson, we need rain. He said, you'll have it in two hours. It, it, that's what he said to him. Now, that's Oral told me that. Oral was there with him. And he said it rained exactly two hours later. So, uh, you know, people like him, people like him are, are rare. I mean, m most of them are in heaven now. So, you were a young boy. How old were you? Young, but what, you remember what, 10? Or oh, more than 10, okay. So, like in, in your teens, in your teens. And you came with your, with your, your mother, a pastor, and I remember that, that, that morning, dear Lord, 30,000 people in that church had three levels, and the fans did not work. Half of them did not work. I, I, I was so hot, I almost fainted. And everywhere I would, you know, every service, they would give me a robe, a new robe. For I look like the Pope with colors every day. <laughs> One day it was yellow and red and green and blue, and the next day was other colors. And it was wonderful to wear them because when, when you got hot, all, all you did is this. <laughs> and your own air conditioning. But it was a wonderful time for me that really changed our life. And uh, I love Nigeria. I really love Nigeria. I was just there. Uh, how many are from Nigeria? All right. How many are not from Nigeria? So where are the others from? Cameroon. Cameroon. Say again. Oh, how many India? India. Somebody is waving a flag there. I don't know what flag that was. What flag is it? Zimbabwe. I I was Liberia. Wow. How many from Liberia? Let me see you. Wow. I was supposed to go to Liberia years ago, and then they had the Civil War, and I could not go. That was years ago. I mean, listen, I began preaching when I was 21. I'm 71 now, so that's like a long time ago. 50, it'll be 50 years this year. And the Lord has been so good. Thank God. Thank the Lord for Jesus, you know, I'll tell you. But I want to just say one thing. How many here are not from Africa? You are not from Africa. Okay, all, the, all those who are not from Africa, stand up. Okay, beautiful. You may be seated, you may be seated. 
The reason I, I want to talk to you about Africa is because I just finished one of the greatest crusades in Nairobi. You're from Kenya, okay. How many, how many Kenyans? All right. The president and his wife invited me to go, and we, we were there in February. This was the first time in my life, ever in my life, where nearly the entire government was on the platform. They, we, we, we had three platforms, not just one, three platforms. And every, almost every member, I think, of the government was there. And the last night, the president, his wife, vice president, his wife, the governors, their wives, and officials from the government were there. And the power of God came on all of them. And, and I'll tell you something. Something happened in the atmosphere. Because when at one, at, at one point, you may have seen it, I don't know, I had the president come and, and I prayed with them. And he was on his knees, which was very, very moving to see he and his wife. And uh, the, 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 the presence of the Lord was just so tangible. And the Lord uh, really has honored Africa, in my opinion, in a great way. And I've seen, I've seen such an intensity in the last few. In fact, I've been to Africa three times just this year already. I was, I was in Ghana in... January, there's the Ghana people, I, I love Ghana. We went to Kenya in February, Nigeria in March. And, and what, what I saw in those three countries alone this year already, intense, intense presence of the Lord. In all the meetings. The, the, I think the one that amazed me in, in, a, in a very special way is when I was in, in, in Accra and, and the young people, their hunger was, I don't know if I even have a word for it, they were starving for the part of God. Just intense hunger for the Lord. And, and that gives us incredible hope. And then 27,000, now this, they told me in Kenya, they told me that they've never had that many pastors come together ever in the history of the country. 27,000 pastors came from all the corners of Kenya for the special meeting I had with them. We were supposed to be at the convention center. It was too small. They went back to the, to the stadium because it was the only place big, big enough which seated about 150, and these 27,000 pastors were there, and it began raining and nobody moved, and to see the intensity of their hunger. So, you know, you just told me that the Lord has blessed your ministry in Benin, what's happening. Get ready for some bigger things. Seriously. Because, look, I, I think, I think the, the people of Africa will put a demand on people like you. Because they've become, they become so hungry for the things of God. And the darker it gets in the world, the greater the hunger in the people of God. And even unbelievers. And, and I saw that this year. I, I never thought I would see the intensity. I've been to, to Africa many times, many times over the last 50 years. And I think I've been to a lot of countries that maybe most of you don't even know I've been. I've been to Zimbabwe and Zambia and on and on. But, and Congo and other places. But I've never seen the intensity of the hunger among especially young people. And I would ask you as, as a man of God and all of you who are in, in the ministry, focus on the young people now. Because they, they, they will carry the fire, I think, much faster than anyone else. So, thank you for having me. And, uh, and remember, 
We're going to be good friends. Can we give the Lord a mighty hand of praise? Thank you for watching. Bye.